my name is Jenna and I'm with Doc City. And we're really excited to welcome our friends from the University of Gibraltar to talk to everyone today. So thank you all for joining us. Before we jump in, I want to encourage everyone to ask questions throughout the presentation. And you can do that in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. And our presenters will answer those questions at the end of their presentation. Um, but for now, I'd like to introduce our three presenters. Um, we have Anya Ponter from the head of the School of Business at University of Gibraltar. We have Henry Earle, the Communications and Outreach Officer at University of Gibraltar, and we have Rada Harma, who's a student in the Bachelor of Business Administration program, and they're really excited to share some cool things with y'all today. Um, so at this point, I'll hand the mic to Henry to get things started. Hello, welcome everyone. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen. Uh, so welcome to the webinar. Uh, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about Gibraltar because I, I know maybe some of you might not know uh, where Gibraltar is or, or what it looks like. Uh, so I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about that. I hope you can all see my screen. Um, this is what the schedule is going to look like for the webinar. So the introduction to me about Gibraltar and the University of Jib. Uh, then Anya Pants is going to talk to us about the BBA program. We'll have Reda speak about the program and his experience. Um, and then Anya will talk about the, the postgraduate program, our Masters in Business Administration. And then we'll have time for questions at the end. So a little bit about Gibraltar and where it's located. It's located at the south of the Iberian Peninsula. So right at the bottom of Spain, a small place there called Gibraltar at the entrance to the Mediterranean. Uh, we're British overseas territory. So that means our official language, our first language is English, but Spanish is a very close second because of our proximity to Spain. Like I said, Gibraltar is quite small. It's only 6.27 square kilometers, with a, but it's quite dense as well. It has a, a population of 32,000 in a small area. Um, because of its size, Gibraltar is a, quite a safe place. And also because of its location, it's quite multicultural. It's a very close to, to Morocco um, and it's linked to Spain. So it has a, a quite diverse population. Here's the photos of what's known as the rock. Uh, if you look at the image on the top left, you can see a little bit of uh, green uh, grass. Well, the university is located right to the left of that. So we're right at the very end of Gibraltar. It's called Europa Point. Um, uh, uh, the rock is a peninsula. So it's surrounded on all sides by sea bar one. That means because of its location in the Mediterranean, we have some lovely weather and also lovely beaches. That's one of my favorite beaches. Oh, that's called Sandy Bay. Um, and yeah, these are just some other photos. The photos on the bottom left is Casemate. So it's like one of our main squares. And then the photo on the bottom right is called Ocean Village. It's mainly a place where there are a lot of restaurants and, and sort of leisure activities that can, that, can, uh, that can be enjoyed in Gibraltar. So a bit about the university. We're quite a new university. We opened up in 2015. So that means uh, we have new facilities, uh, cut, cutting edge facilities. Um, our programs are linked, are aligned to the UK. So we have UK standards in the Mediterranean. And all of our programs are designed with industry input. That means that people who work in industry help fashion aspects of the program to really provide those students who, who do, who go onto our program with practical skills when they enter the workplace. So you don't just end up with the theory, but you also end up with the practical skills that will help you get a job and um, be successful. Here are some photos of our campus. Of course, if you were to be in Gibraltar, I would definitely offer you a tour of our campus, but here's some photos of what it looks like. If you look at the image, uh, the second image on the top row, that's our main atrium. So that sort of links two separate buildings together. Uh, it links the upper atrium and the lower atrium. On the lower side of, of the atrium, we have all our different types of classrooms. So we have lecture theatre rooms, we have workshop style rooms, we have presentation rooms, um, and we also have a lab. And then we also have what's known as our student common room. That's the image that you can see on the bottom right. This obviously has a place for, to eat and drink and also a place for our students to relax. And the image on the top left is our library. We do have a small library. Most of our online, all, most of our resources are online. So that's a whirlwind tour of our campus. 
of course studying with us you'd get your own student experience one of them being you can stay in our student accommodation which is only two minutes away from um from the campus it's very new accommodation it was built in 2019 so brand new facilities as well there <clears throat> we have a growing um community of international students studying with us which is great uh, and hopefully you can join and be a, another another uh another place on the list i guess that's of students that are studying with us but most important about the student experience here at the university of gibraltar is your access to with tutors <coughs> sorry you get more personal access with tutors we focus on small class sizes and hopefully you'll hear similarly from from reda and, and from anya about the the connection that our, our students have with our tutors uh, the fact that you get that little bit extra support that you may need and a bit more of a personal style of university experience than you get in other places these are some photos of our accommodation like i said two minutes away they're all studio apartments um and uh, yeah so that means they have their own bathroom they have their own kitchen compared to the university that i went to when i went i went to the uk to study uh, when i was younger and my bathroom was i remember a complete plastic box these are, are a lovely accommodation really nice nicely furnished and finished importantly uh, because of our growing international student community um, and the fact that we are we teach in english and english is, is is our first language in gibraltar we understand that not all students first language is english and so we will have we have what we've called the europa point language center and this just provides English uh, for academic purposes to assist our students on the academic journey. And we have two ways in which we assist our students. The first is a pre-sessional English course. So this course will run before the program begins. That would mean in the summer, um, around eight to 12 weeks before the program. Um, and there would just be courses to help get you up to, to the, the ILETS level that you need for the, to, to attend the program. If you only need a little bit of support in terms of uh, in terms of your ILETS uh, for the program that you're applying for, we have what's known as academic English support, and this runs in parallel with the program. So that would start in September at the same time as your program. But not to worry about this, we of course will help you when you're going through your application stage and help advise you on the support that you may or may not need. Something that's quite important and has affected the whole world is uh, is COVID-19. It's had a big effect over the past year and year and a bit. Um, but here at the University of Gibraltar, we're really focused on on campus in person teaching and the fact that we have small class sizes and that the, um, the rollout of the vaccine has been very successful in Gibraltar means that we've been able to hold many or most of our classes in person. Um, and we, of course, follow all the latest government guidelines. Um, but like I said, because of the numbers of students that we have in classes, uh, we'll be, we've been able to host uh, more lessons face to face. Of course, there was a period when we had to go online and we do have a virtual learning environment called Canvas that we use to, to do this. So our students never missed out on, on their education. Just some key points before I move on to Anya and let her talk to you about the Bachelor of Business Administration. Um, our programs are UK aligned. Our main focus and priority is always face-to-face -face teaching. Gibraltar itself is a safe community and uh, we have the Europa Point Language Center to help those students who may need a little bit of help in, the, in terms of their English language. And lastly, and most importantly, in order to apply to the program, you apply directly through our website. You go onto the course page, click the apply button and start the application through there. So I'm just gonna pass you over onto Anya and stop my sharing. Thank you, Henry. Okay, I will share my screen now. Okay, so hopefully you can see the webinar. Yep. And I'm going to do it from... Okay, I'm going to start with a short video um, of the, the Bachelor of Business Administration programme. Hi, I'm Anya Panter. I'm the programme coordinator for the Bachelor of Business Administration here at the University of Gibraltar. In the first year, the students are offered the opportunity to learn all about different aspects of, of a business. For example, they do a little bit of accounting, economics, finance, management, marketing. 
and then after that they're given the opportunity to specialise in a particular area. My name is Andrew Hernandez, I'm Gibraltarian and I'm studying the BBA. Previous to this I studied at Nottingham Trent University over in the UK where I was also studying a BBA and I managed to directly transfer over to this course. My name is Jose Miguel. I am from La Linea and I'm studying here at the university, the BBA. This is my second degree. I have studied in Spain as well as in Germany. From my point of view, I think that the module and the courses are really well organized. The subjects are really intentionally chosen to fit the necessities and to provide us with the skills to face the business world and environment. The placement is tied into their, their area of specialisation. We've got the support of the local business community who have been very good and have offered the students the, the placements. My name is Zainab Sadiqi. After my sex with placement with Basadoni, I have a better understanding on what I want to do after I graduate. Something that attracted me to study here is the really important business community, especially its connection with the university. I think there's a lot more conversation going on between everyone and that I think um, really helps and enhances your learning. Okay, so there I am. Um, you saw me in the video as well. So I've worked at the university since 2016, shortly after it opened. And during that time, I've taught in various programs. Um, I manage the undergraduate and postgraduate provision. And just by way of background, I'm a chartered accountant and a qualified teacher. So why would you want to study with us? So in, today I'm going to talk, um, first of all, I'm going to speak about the BBA, you've just seen the video, and then I will do, I will speak about our MBA program also. So in general, we have small class sizes, as Henry mentioned. So certainly from a postgraduate point of view, if you're interested in doing the MBA, you would be joining a network of professionals. So it's all about collaboration and networking and sharing ideas and sharing and discussing and analyzing ideas within the, the classroom environment. So we are very much about the participative and face-to-face -face approach. So what does that mean? That means that our classes are more like workshops. All our lectures adopt a workshop style. So yes, you do need to learn the theory and you need to know the theory. However, it's about discussing that theory within the classroom. If it's from on a postgraduate basis, it's about applying the theory, maybe to your own work experience. At an undergraduate, i.e. BBA level, it's very much about just discussing it um, through, through case studies and through our, our lecturers as well. All our lecturers are very experienced. They have PhDs or professional qualifications as well as educational experience and industry experience. We find that as invaluable. All our lecturers are able to contextualize the theory. So bring the theory to life with their own experience. And the feedback we, we get from the students is that they really value this. So we also have a virtual learning environment called Canvas. Canvas is a one-stop shop for all of our, all of our students' resources. So for any assignments they need to do, et cetera, all the material that they, they need um, in, for, in relation to any particular module is included within, within Canvas. It's also very helpful if any students have to miss any lectures for any reason that they can go into Canvas and catch up on the material that they have missed. We provide learning support sessions to our students in referencing, academic writing, use of the library, etc. Um, and also within, we have a, a well-stocked library as well, where students are also able to access a range of, of resources and, and databases. And we have a very helpful librarian who is able to help students access any resources that they are not able to find themselves. So I'll talk first of all a little bit about the BBA. So what is the BBA? Perhaps one day you're thinking you'd like to run your own business or learn more about how businesses operate. Who knows, maybe you're the next Elon Musk or even JK Rowling. Then consider a BBA with the University of Gibraltar. What is it all about? A BBA is a degree in business that combines theory and practice. So it provides a well-rounded education in business as, as a whole. As I mentioned earlier, it's very much about, yes, you have to learn the theory, but how do you apply that theory in practice? How is that done? It's done through, as I mentioned, our lectures of industry experience, so they're able to use their own examples from their own work environment, but also the use of case studies as well. Um, also, we provide our, our students with meaningful industry placements, even abroad as well, when, when COVID uh, passes. Your old students are also able to choose their, to tailor their, their degree by choosing their own major. And we hope that by the end of it all, what we have developed is a business professional. 
And in a moment, I'll, I'll discuss the placements and the, the majors also. So it's very much coursework focused with a variety of assessment types. So students are encouraged to do, for example, maybe group and individual presentations, maybe some case study analysis, essays, business reports, projects. We also have exams within the BBA, but not every module would have an exam. But what it means, because we have a variety of assessment types, there's less emphasis on the final exam. So because we're aligned to the UK standards, students must attain an average of 40% across the various assessments that they need to do. So if for some reason students do not perform well enough in one presentation, they, in one assessment, they then have the opportunity to do better in another assessment to get 40% on average across the, the module. So I mentioned that you can choose your own major. What does this mean? Well, the majors we're currently offering are management, finance and marketing. What that means is that in years two and years three, and I'll go through a schedule shortly, students have the option of students can, can do modules that are related specifically to, to, to their major. So for example, they can choose to, to specialize in management. If they do, then in year two, they will do human resource management and comparative management. And in year three, they do intercultural management and, and um, operations management. And then because, and I'll speak about the placements, the placements then are related to the major as well. So if you choose to major in management, you do a work placement within a company focusing on management or finance or marketing. Um, so this year, and perhaps Reda might talk a little bit about it, we've had students who have, um, a lot of our students have chosen to, to major in marketing. So they have taken undertaken their, their, made, their placements in a marketing company. Uh, and I'll talk about it a little bit more in, um, in a moment. So the, as I mentioned, the placements, we have, they are related to, to the major and they're undertaken in years two and years three. We're changing it slightly from the, uh, as it has been to date so that we're offering them now in years two and years three. And in year one, there would be a placement project as opposed to actually going out on placement. So the emphasis on the placement does run throughout the, throughout the, the, the degree, the three years of the degree. So the placements, as I said, can be local or international. We do also provide soft skills training in advance so that some of our students um, so that our students are ready to, to, to hit the ground running when, when, they, when they go into the placement. So we do a little bit of communication skills, um, maybe leadership skills, personality testing. Um, and then in year three, before students go on their final placement, they will do a little bit of career, a career development workshop. So a bit of um, CV, the curriculum, uh, the curriculum vitae preparation. Um, interview preparation, etc. So our, the idea being that when students finish their three year degree here with the University of Gibraltar, they are ready to, to work in, in any environment. They've had that experience throughout the throughout their degree. So it's not so, so they're very familiar with the workplace environment when they finish. The work placement is also assessed um, and the students undertake assignments that allow the application of the material learned to date. So the assignment is all about applying what their experience to what they have learned in the classroom. So it's a very, they're very practical assignments. So if you were to study the BBA, what would you be doing? What areas would you be studying? So maybe perhaps a little bit of accounting in year one. So it, it's about it, it's accounting, economics, management, management information systems, business data analysis, marketing, finance, etc. The idea being that in year one, students are ready to um, students get an introduction to all the different areas that they would need to, to run a business. We're also split into semesters. So semester one, it, and each semester is 12 weeks. We start in September and run for 12 weeks in December, come back again in January and run for, for 12 weeks again up until sort of um, a, up until April. During that time, as I'm sure Redo will, will, will mention, it is, it, it's busy, it's full on. Students will undertake a number of assessments during those 12 weeks and then they'll have exams at the end. And likewise in semester two, students then finish mid-May until September again. So that's year one. Year two, students study organisation behaviour, international business, entrepreneurship, and then they also do their major modules. So as I said, if you're majoring, for example, in finance, you would do corporate finance in semester one. And then, in semester two, business law, consumer behavior, 
And then the, fi the finance module would be investment analysis. And then go out on your, your placement then in semester two of year two. And you would have some soft skills training before you go on placement, as I mentioned. Year three then is very much about honing those skills and getting your students ready to, re re ready to, to work upon graduation. So what do our students study? Management strategy, business ethics and corporate governance. Again, two major modules. For example, if you're majoring in finance, you would do advanced corporate finance and international finance. And then semester two is about, it's a 10 week placement, again, with soft skills in advance and the dissertation also then as well. So after all that, what sort of careers would we expect our students to undertake? Perhaps our students might be, may have an, um, could be an entrepreneur, like I mentioned at the beginning, a financial or a business analyst, a human resources manager, operations manager, marketing manager, even working in the tourist industry. So with a BBA, it, is, it does provide a very good grounding in all aspects of business. So really, you could enter into any particular business arena. So at this point, I'm going to hand over to Reda, who's going to talk about his experience with the, the BBA. Thank you, Anya. Yeah, and I think, Reda, are you going to... Just a moment. Oops, sorry. Reda, I think, are you going to share your screen? Yeah. Yeah, okay, thank you. So I was, I'll stop sharing. There we go. Can you see my screen? Yes, yep. Oh, we, we see with the notes. Yeah, we can see your notes, Reda. So maybe if you... Yeah. No. There we go. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this webinar. Uh, I hope everyone can see my presentation. Uh, my name is Zarada Harma. I'm first year BBA student. I'm going to talk about my experience here in Gibraltar. First, let me give you a brief description about my background. Uh, Rada, we can see your notes still. I have to share this one. Let me give you a, a brief description about myself. Uh, I'm from Rabat, Morocco. I'm first year Bachelor of uh, Business Administration student. Uh, after I finished my high school uh, in physics, I did a degree in biomedical maintenance. And last year I work in a, a, a health facility. And after that, I applied to uh, Gibraltar University reasons why I chose the University of, Z of Gibraltar. Uh, first, why I chose the BBA program. Uh, I found during my uh, work experience that uh, acquiring business skills uh, is crucial to advance in my career and reach my professional goals. Why uh, the University of Gibraltar? Because they offer UK aligned standard programs and also they have small class size which uh, enabled the uni to adapt uh, the entrepreneurial uh, spirit, which you can see it uh, in the uh, private and personal experience they offer uh, to each student here and the support and help they offer to every individual, either, even academically or non-academically. And also they have uh, uh, there are quick uh, at tackling problems uh, that we will face as a student and they are flexible to response to our uh, complaints. I ch for the location, I, I choose Gibraltar because it's a unique place. It's rich in culture. It's 
It has a diverse community. You can find people, uh, uh, British people, uh, Spanish people, Moroccans. And the weather here is just perfect. It's sunny uh, almost uh, all the days of the year. And also, you, uh, you can find a lot of international companies and variety of indus promising industries because of the strategic location that Gibraltar have as a link between Africa and Europe. Uh, my experience with the uni starts when I start the application. Uh, the application process for me was very smooth. I applied on the 2nd of July and I got uh, my response on the 27th of July. After that, I got the support from the student experience office who helped me to apply to the accommodation and also to apply for the visa as they have uh, direct contact with the accommodation managers and uh, uh, for the visa they have direct contact with the immigration office and also they helped me to find uh, the flight to jet because i uh, i fly when there was restrictions because of covid and also they helped me to get the covid test on arrival and they, they arranged that with the health authorities of jet and also they arranged for me a taxi to take me from the airport to the accommodation. Uh, uh, academically, we start the year with uh, an induction uh, week. We have induction sessions. Uh, These uh, sessions help us uh, as students to make the transfer from and uh, get familiarized with the uni system and to transfer from the high school system to the uni system uh, with it uh, we learn about how to use the uni platforms how to use the uh, uni email system and we learn about the examination guide uh, and the evaluation evaluation processes and also we learn some academic skills like how to make uh, academic writing and essays, how to do research, how to manage our time in the uni. Uh, for the classes, uh, we have a mixed class. We had lectures, workshops, and presentation. We, were, uh, we are 12 students. We have students from Russia, Sweden, Spain, and UK, and France, and America. And we get with each other very well, and we learn from each other every day. And for the lecture schedule, we study from Monday to Thursday, and we have three days weekend. And we had two lectures every day uh, that start from 4 p.m. to 7.45 p.m. Uh, and we have 15 minutes break between them. And the semester uh, go uh, 12 weeks of lectures, and then we had one week uh, to prepare for the final exam and one week for the final exams. Uh, for the lectures we have, we have uh, the lectures are very uh, knowledgeable and experienced individual. They have, they got like, they gather their knowledge, not only from their studies and the books, but also from working in high position, uh, high position, uh, jobs and their industry and the discipline that they teach us and what i like the most about the lectures here is that their ability to to break down hard concept uh, and make it easier for us to understand because they understand exactly the ambiguities that each students have and this is easier uh, when you have a small class and this way uh, no student is left behind and also they are helpful if you go to them for advice either academically or advice about your future career uh, and the highlight what differ uh, the university of gibraltar from other universities is the annual work placement uh, uh, the placement is uh, held in the second semester we start uh, with the uh, pre-placement sessions in the class for four weeks. And we learn in this uh, to prepare us for the placement. Uh, I have learned in this session how to present myself in the workplace, how to communicate effectively in the workplace, 
how to understand uh, others, to understand myself, and how to help others to understand me, depending on the personality types, and how to collaborate in teams, how to and how the the culture of a company affect the workplace, and also uh, how to look for careers based on your uh, strength and weakness. And during the placement, I start the placement. I did my placement in a pet vector, which is a well-known, uh, well-established company uh, in the online gambling industry. It has 500 workers. Uh, I was shadowing uh, for six weeks the, the work of a various team in the company. Uh, what I learned during this placement is how to communicate effectively and how to to act in a work uh, workplace because sometimes in the beginning it seems hard but it requires a specific uh, at, uh, specific attribute like being enthusiastic uh, commitment to objective how to manage your time how to communicate how to work with team uh, and also, I have uh, I've been presented to a lot of uh, different communication styles because I have to speak with people from different backgrounds and that had different expertise that use different jargon. So it's exposed me to different communication styles. And also, I observe uh, a different leadership style as I was observing how we managers manage their teams and also i had the opportunity to attend meeting uh, that had uh, that were attended by executive managers and also this placement uh, present me with the opportunity to connect and build my uh, professional network Uh, Gibraltar doesn't all, uh, only present you a career, a good career perspective, but also different uh, leisure activities. Uh, you can uh, what what I like, what I prefer to do uh, in my pastime is enjoy a day in the beach here in Jib. There is different good beach beach here, and also climb the upper the rock of Gibraltar and enjoy the the sunset. You can also join different sports clubs. You can do kayaking or football or rugby or tennis uh, or athletics. Also, you can mm, go for trips to discover the region of Andalusia. You can, there is like uh, uh, the beaches of Tarifa when you can do surfing. And also you can go in the winter to ski in Sierra Nevada, which is close to Jeb or you can discover the closest cities like Malaga and Marbella. And, and also there is a good restaurant in Jib when we go out for dinner or for drinks. They have a rich uh, type of cuisines here in Jib that you can enjoy. And now I will give the floor to back to Anya. I will stop sharing my screen. Very much, Reda. Okay, I will share my screen again. Okay, so if you're interested in applying for the BBA after listening to, to Reda and to, and to my presentation, what are the entry requirements? Well, if you undertake the UK A level, we would look for a BCC or a, the equivalent of 104 UCAS points. If you're doing the International Baccalaureate, we look for 27 to 30 points. However, that said, we do look at everyone's application individually. So if you haven't studied either of those, um, those qualifications, as we have said, we're very multicultural, so please do apply anyway. And even if your, your, what you have studied would not meet the equivalent of those, please do apply and we look at everybody on an individual basis. If you have studied the, the UK A levels, we would also look for five GCSEs, a grade four or above, including A star to C, 
um, our report tonight, including English, English and maths with the international equivalent. We look for strong communication skills, basic IT skills such as word processing, email and the internet. And as Henry mentioned earlier, we look for an IELTS of 6.5. Okay, so I think after this, that's all I'm going to talk about the, the undergraduate BBA and I'm going to just do a short presentation on the MBA and I'm going to start with another video. I'm Anya Panther, I'm the Program Coordinator for the School of Business here at the University of Gibraltar. An MBA is a Master's of Business Administration. It is a very practically orientated program which provides a very thorough grounding in all aspects of running a business. Gibraltar is a great place to complete an MBA because of the nature of the business community we have in Gibraltar. Gibraltar is a very entrepreneurial community. The management team has to be able to put their, their skills to various, various different scenarios. Therefore, the training that you get through an MBA, which covers all the main, the key business areas of, of running a business, is going to be indispensable. The male target audience are those business professionals who wish to enhance their career prospects or change direction. Business graduates who have had relevant work experience during their undergraduate degree are those for whom their undergraduate degree was not in a business related area and wish to attain management and leadership positions. Doing an MBA was a really great experience. Um, I was the youngest person doing it in my class, which is a little strange. MBAs tend to be geared for people kind of late 20s, 30s, 40s. And I think it really, it really enhanced my kind of work experience. The key features of the MBA is that it is a very practically orientated course on applying the learning to the, the theory to the workplace setting. I think the focus on kind of the more commercial aspects of business and the senior management aspects of business, which I wouldn't have been able to kind of tackle or achieve at 22, 23, was great. The MBA is delivered on both a part-time and a full-time basis. I would definitely recommend kind of recent graduates or Gibraltar's professionals to do an MBA locally. I think having that advantage of attending uni a couple of times a week, being able to interact with your classmates uh, kind of face-to-face -face, uh, will really give them kind of a competitive edge. I think the MBA is, is, is a great tool. How the university do that in Gibraltar, I think is gonna be really beneficial for the community here. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm going to continue now. So what is an MBA? Well, I think that that video uh, described it a little bit, but perhaps you'd like to enhance your career prospects or change its direction. Maybe your undergraduate degree was not in a business related area, but you would like to attain a leadership or management position. Then if that's the case, then consider a, an MBA. So what is it? I mentioned earlier, it's very practically orientated. It's all about the application of learning. Like the the undergraduate BBA, yes, you have to learn the theory, but certainly at MBA level, you are expected to be able to discuss it, discuss it and critically analyze it by bringing in your own experience from the workplace and also looking at, again, talking, you know, the, um, the lecture experience, but also examining case studies, of various businesses, business models throughout the world. So it provides a grounding in all key aspects of business, for example, management, marketing, accounting. Again, I'll go through the, I'll go through the list shortly. And it's offered on both a full-time and a part-time basis, as I mentioned in the video. The full-time is one year and the part-time is two years. So it's very coursework focused with a variety of assessment types like the BBA. However, unlike the undergraduate, there are no final exams. So it's very much focused on coursework. So to give you an example of the types, there's group presentations, interviews, essays, case study analysis, business reports, just to give you some, some examples. So what would you be studying? Again, like the BBA, it's split into semesters. So there's semester one and semester two. In semester one, it's accounting reporting, marketing management, managing new technologies, managing people. Semester two, leadership and managing change, business law, managerial finance, and strategic decision-making. Um, and I should mention as well that all of these modules, like the, the BBA modules, are 15 credit UK, the equivalent of the UK QAA 15 credit modules. Um, and if you were to do this on a part time basis, it would be split over two years. So you would do two modules of semester one in year one and two modules of semester two. And then in year two, you'll come back and do the other two modules that you didn't do in, in year one. At the end of it all, you're also expected to do a capstone project. So this is worth 60 credits. 
and the capstone project is in semester three if you do it on do it on a full-time one-year basis so if you're doing it on a so it would be from from may until the end of august at the end of your first year or if you do it on a part-time basis at the end of your second year so what is the capstone project it provides an opportunity to apply the theory from all previous modules to an area of interest so it can be either within your own workplace setting, a company of your own choosing, or a company quoted on the New York or London Stock Exchanges. So what we find is our students find this, especially if they're already working, or they're familiar with a company or an organization, that they, they, they benefit from work doing their, their project on their own organization or that organization that they're familiar with. So it's about considering everything that you have learned throughout the MBA, and applying it to, to an organization in order to make recommendations for enhancements. Um, and it's assessed via a 15 to 18,000 word business report and presentation then as well to a panel. So I asked one of our MBA students if he could provide me with some feedback um, on, on his experience. And this is what he provided to me. So he values the fact that there's a very close relationship between the faculty and the student body. The fact the university seeks regular feedback and more importantly promptly acts on the received feedback. He likes the fact that the learning material can easily be related to his working environment and the ability to put into practice the theory learned in the lectures and tutorials. He finds this challenging but he, he feels he gets the right support to work through the material. He enjoys the benefit of the assignment based assessment approach. He feels that the program works through a good variety of subjects and mod modules which relate to each other. And he values the fact that the group sizes are small, so there's a close relationship between the fellow students and the lecturers. So what are our entry requirements? We do look for a good first degree, for example, a 2-1. We also look for individuals who've had work experience, but that includes graduates who've had a placement, such as our on our BBA programme. And again, for international students, we would look for an IELTS of 6.5. That said, as I said, if you do not meet those requirements, please contact us anyway and do apply as we will consider all applicants. So if, there, uh, if after all of that, you are interested in applying for either our, our BBA programme, our MBA programme, how do you do so? You can do so by visiting our website and there's our link and completing the, clicking on the link and completing the application form. So I think that's it from me. And I'm open to any questions. All right. Well, thank you so much to, to everyone for sharing so much. Um, so at now, at this point, we'll transition into the Q&A portion of the presentation. So um, all of our participants, you're encouraged to add any questions to the Q&A box below, and we'll do our best to work through all the questions that you've sent. And so to get things started, we had um, Marco ask, um, is there an entrance exam? So no, there isn't an entrance exam, but we would look certainly for the undergraduate, we would look at their school leaving exams. Um, and for the postgraduate, as I just mentioned there, if I go back to the entry requirements, we would look for a good first degree um, or have look for recent work experience. Fantastic, thank you. Thank you. Um, and there was a question about scholarships. Are there scholarships available and how would someone go about applying for one? Okay, there are a number of scholarships available. Um, the closing dates are coming up quite soon. So we would recommend anyone who is interested in applying to, to do so um, quite soon. I would mention that this year we have reduced our international fees to the level of our home fees as well. Um, so all students will pay the same amount regardless of, of where they're coming from um, and I will just add that the scholarships are quite limited but further details can be found on our web page so if you go onto the University of Gibraltar website um, there's a section in there under students for, for scholarships. Great thank you. Um, someone also asked is there an interview that is required to apply for the MBA program? Yes, so what we do is we do set up an interview um, with all our applicants. So it's it's an interview, it's an, in, it's an informal interview. I mean, we look, students are, applicants are required to submit all documentation upon application. So we, once we we've received it and we have reviewed it, we will set up an interview. 
um, just to get to, to know the student a bit better, um, maybe determine their level of English. And also it's an opportunity for the applicants to ask us quest any questions they have as well about Gibraltar, about the programme, et cetera. Thank you. Thank you. Um, here's an interesting question. Uh, it's two parts. Does the MBA offer any concentration? And uh, this student wants to know your advice about an MBA versus a master and what's the better choice? Okay. Um, so no, the MBA does not offer a, a concentration or a specialization in a particular area. However, if I just go back to the capstone project, that really gives students the opportunity to, to focus on a particular area. So for example, we have some students who are very interested in the FinTech area, which is very popular in Gibraltar at the moment. So therefore, you know, they could use that opportunity to focus their, their capstone on that particular area. And to go back to the second part of the question, which is the difference between an MBA and a master's. So I presume that, I mean, an MBA is a master's of business administration. So I assume they mean sort of maybe another type of maybe an MA. And for example, we, we also offer, and I haven't spoken about it today, but we offer an MA in leadership and management as well. Um, but I, the main difference really is the, the breadth of subjects that the MBA covers. I think the MBA covers all aspects that will be required to to lead a business. Um, we also look for an MBA for individuals who already have, certainly have work experience and even have maybe perhaps have an element of management experience, but not always, as I said, we, we will review everybody individually. What we find are those who may perhaps wish to apply for an MA leadership of management do not currently have that experience, but would like to eventually attain a, a management or leadership position. So would like to, to to do the program in order to get there. Whereas the MBA is very much focused on leading a, an entire organization and looking at those who may already have an element of experience. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> yeah, I hope so too. But um, whoever asked that question, I think they were anonymous. Um, okay. Shout out if you have further questions. Um, thanks for that, Anya. And we have a question, shout out for Rada. Um, Rada, someone wants to know what made you choose University of Gibraltar? Are you happy with your choice? And how well connected is Gibraltar to other cities in Europe? First of all, uh, my choice, I choose uh, the University of Gibraltar because I'm from Morocco, it's so close, it's the same weather. And uh, I studied before in uh, big uh, schools and small schools, and I preferred every time a small school because they have this private and personalized experience that you can get. Uh, if you had any problem, you can talk directly with the, the administration or the lecturers, and they are quick at uh, dealing with your problem, uh, uh, personal problem. And the second question is, um, is Gibraltar well connected to other European cities? Yes, uh, Gibraltar is uh, very close to, it's close to Spain and uh, there is flight from the Jeb airport to UK uh, and also you can take flight from Malaga, there is the airport of Malaga which is close and they have uh, flights to every city in Europe. So, and the third question. Yeah, I, I think that answered it. Yeah. Great, thank you, Reda. Um, uh, we have a question about uh, career services. Do you have a like career services office um, or services at the university that can help students to find jobs or internships? Absolutely, yes, we do. Um, we at the moment we actually source the, the placements and the internships for, for the students. Um, and we have managed to, to, to gain very close relationships with the, the local community here in Gibraltar have been really helpful. Um, but yes, by all means, we, we do our best to, to help our students to, to find jobs and, and internships, yes. Fantastic. Um, there was a question early on in the presentation about um, is it a private or public faculty? I think it's asking, is it a private or public university? 
Okay, it's private in the sense that, um, yeah, students do have to pay fees to, to come here, to attend the university. Great, thank you. Um, and can any of you speak to the situation with COVID and, and what day-to-day -day life looks like and restrictions and what a student can expect? Okay, um, shall I go, Henry, or do you want to, I mean, or, yeah, Henry, do you want to speak? <laughs> yeah, you can go for it, you can go yeah. for this. No. <laughs> okay, um, so yes, we've been very fortunate here in Gibraltar that the, I think, 86%, the entire population has been offered the vaccine and I think there's been an 86 or 90% take up. Um, also all of, our, all of our students, including all of our international students have been offered the vaccine and we have been, it, yeah, we have been assured that, you know, any international students coming in September will also be offered the vaccine. What that has meant is that we've been very fortunate here in Gibraltar that we've been able to unlock um, perhaps sooner than, than other locations. Um, because the numbers are very, very, very minimal. So it's, it's practically life is back to normal here in Gibraltar as far as it, as it goes. And even across the border in Spain, um, with the exception of having to wear masks, it is more or less back to, to normal in Spain as well, so in, in the local area here just over the border. So we're, we're quite fortunate. Obviously, it's being monitored on a regular basis like it is everywhere else. But as of today, um, that's how it is. And sorry, I'll just add that we were fortunate that we were able to return, as Henry mentioned as well um, in his presentation, we were able to return to face-to-face -face classes very early on in mid-February, and um, we're hoping to, that we'll be able to continue for as long as possible. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, and we're almost done with the questions that we have. So anyone else, if you have more questions, um, send them to the Q&A box now and we'll do our best to answer them. Um, but Martina is asking about how many students apply each year and are there a limited number of spaces available? Okay, well, we're a new university. Um, we're only five years old and our degree programs are only a few years old. Um, with regards to how many students apply, that is a very good question. Um, we, this year we have had, we have a lot of applicants um, at the moment. So far, we have been able to offer anyone who meets the criteria has been offered a place. Um, so we'll just have to just sort of we're going to monitor, monitor it for this year again. But we can, um, I mean, yeah, we, we, we will hopefully be able to accept any students who, who meet the criteria. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Anya. Uh, so we've worked through all of the questions that were in the Q&A box. Um, so I'll turn it back to our presenters one last time in case you had, oh, you know what? We did have one question just added right now. Um, for the bachelor, do you offer any internships? Do you have companies you typically collaborate with? Um, Martina specifically wants to know about London, if you can speak to that. Okay. Um... So yes, we certainly have, we do, as I said, we offer internships, we offer placements. We are also, I mean, obviously over the last two years, we haven't been able to do this, um, but we would hope, we hope to be able to offer students the ability to do their, their placements abroad. And if they would like to do that over the summer period, that is something that we, we are hoping we will be able to, to facilitate for students. Um, with regards to London, I just want to sort of, you know, students to, to, to bear in mind that, we are a new university, so it is, we are only in year three, going into year four, um, but we do have a few companies in London who have already contacted us to say that they would be interested in offering placements to our students. So that is something that we would be looking and hoping to do once the, the, the COVID situation improves, hopefully next year. Great. Yeah, so we've finished all of the questions that have been submitted. Um, so to all of our presenters, do you have anything else you would like to add or any final advice you have for students who may be listening? Um, yeah, I suppose I would. <laughs> yeah. I would yeah, I would just say, um, you know, if any of you are interested, please do contact us. Um, I would be happy to have a chat with anybody individually. Um, and, you know, if anybody would like to, to speak maybe to, to any of us in, individually, you know, we, we can arrange that. 
Um, and yeah, Gibraltar is a, we're, we're, yeah, it's, it's a good place to, to study. Um, and the feedback we get from our, our students is, is very positive. So please, if, if anyone is interested, please just, just contact us. Yeah, I was going to echo the same thing, actually. I was going to say, uh, if you're interested, uh, if you have any questions, I know maybe we've run out of questions now, but if you have any questions that come later, <clears throat> more than welcome to email any of us and we'll de definitely get back to you. Okay, well, on behalf of Doc City, I want to thank everyone for joining us this evening and thank our presenters from University of Gibraltar um, for sharing so much good stuff with us today. Um, so at this point, um, y'all can close it out um, and add, add anything else you'd like to say. Please apply. <laughs> Please sign up. <laughs> Look, at, find out more. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you all for joining us and have a great day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.